Like, what does it feel like in your body when you want to leave? And they may say like, ooh, I notice my hands get really tense. I have some clients where we do a piece of work within two sessions. I have other clients that I've been seeing for two to three years. Hi everyone, welcome back to The Mindful Space. Today we have Justin Martin with us. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for Thanks coming. For Thank yeah. you for taking time to do this interview. Yeah, thanks and drive for having me. A whole hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you could please introduce yourself for our listeners or whoever whoever's watching. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So my name's Justin Martin. I'm a LMHC, which is a licensed mental health counselor. That's what all the the letters <laughs> behind the name mean. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm a therapist that works out of uh, Orlando, Florida. Um, you know, we're going to talk about this a little bit today. I love IFS therapy, but outside of all that, uh, I enjoy playing sports, not getting caught in Miami traffic. <laughs> um, I like writing poetry, reading books. Oh, nice. um, not too many psychology books. Uh, you you try to avoid them. I just I know I can go overboard with them. Okay. It's like, one right. after another, and yeah. then it'll reference a book in it, and you have to go read that one. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I've been in that loop. <laughs> yeah, if you look at my Amazon search history, it's more books than anything else. And so. Oh, wow. So you mentioned you are trained, you use the abbreviation. Yes. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit more of, it stands for Internal Family Systems Therapy, uh -huh. correct? Can you educate us on what that is? Yeah, so... The running joke I have, which is kind of my corny dad joke side of my personality, is are you the same person that you are at a grocery store that you are like at a party? Are you the same person? I'm going to say no. Right. And if you were, then I'd <laughs> okay. like to go grocery shopping with you more. <laughs> but it's this idea that basically we all have different parts of our personality mm -hmm. and they can show up in different settings and, you know, in different environments. and. Um, it's the nature that the mind is multiple and there's actually nothing wrong with that. And so okay. IFS, which stands for internal family systems, is this idea kind of like that we all have this inner family in us and they're made up of all these different aspects okay. of our personality and this mode of modality of therapy helps you get in touch with them and restore harmony kind of to your inner system. So. If you've ever seen the movie Inside Out. Uh, yes. Yeah. The cartoon. Yes. I love yeah. that movie. Yeah. Okay. So actually some of um, IFS therapists helped with that movie. Because, oh, wow. And that's kind of my, my spiel. So if you've seen that movie, it's yeah. a lot like that. Getting to know, you know, it's Like an internal battle with yeah. all your emotions. Right. I love that movie. Yeah. When, when movie. my son saw it, I was like wait, this is all therapeutic stuff. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> and like, they don't notice, but it, it's an amazing movie. Yeah. That's a great example. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the, the rules for this internal family system? Or I think they call it the six Fs or the principles. Yeah, yeah. So the six Fs is, is I wouldn't really say rules. They're more just like guidelines. The whole That's what I really like about the theory is like, it's guidelines for us therapists, but it's a really holistic kind of follow the client's inner system to mm -hmm. healing type of modality. And so um, how it would work is like when people come into my office, I first just ask them, what's going on in your life? I don't really say, hey, we're doing IFS. Like yeah. it's more just okay. listening to what their, what's their problem, right? And most of the time I can hear their inner conflict, right? Like the classic example is, you know, should I stay or should I go in a relationship, right? So you mm -hmm. could look at that as two different parts of yourself. One wants to stay and one wants to leave. And so I'm listening to them and then, you know, I will ask them and reflect back. So it sounds like you've got, you know, a bunch of different parts of you. And they might say, what, what does that mean? And it's like, well, on one hand, you're saying you want to stay. On the other hand, mm -hmm. you're saying you want to leave, right? And reflect that back to them. And then I'll ask them, you know, is there a part of yourself that you're curious about, like that, that yeah. I can help you get closer to to get to know? And that's kind of one of the Fs is kind of just find the part of you that you're wanting to, to work with, right? Okay. And so some people might 
say, no, nah, why would I want to do that? Just tell me what to do, you say, right? Like, I thought everybody said that. <laughs> That's what I hear. It's like, but what should I do? It was like, oh, yeah. you have your answer inside. Right. Yes, yeah, <laughs> right, right. So, um, you know, the, the invitation is, well, if I can help you get curious with this part of you, you can maybe understand why it's doing what it's doing, but also maybe have some more choice in the outside world, whereas for most of us, we just notice these parts of us come in and out, mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot of choice. And so, to your question about the, the Fs, the first one is just to kind of find. And so, if this person said, yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to why I really want to leave the relationship, okay. I might ask them to, okay, let's see if, are you open to maybe trying something with me and seeing if we can get to know it and you know listen and I'll then listen to what's the case for not getting to know it and just hearing out the yeah, client's yeah, yeah. concerns with that and so then what you then do after that is kind of focus in on it so I might ask the person like what does it feel like in your body when you want to leave like what do you notice about okay. that and they may say like ooh I notice my hands get really tense mm -hmm. um, or or a common one is like I notice there's energy in my legs like I, I want to run yeah. um, and so then, you know, moving through the, those guidelines of steps, it's like, would it feel okay to focus in on that? And that's what I love about the theory is it's kind of turning your attention inward. Okay. Right? And so then as they kind of focus in, maybe, for example, they notice their legs are really wanting to move and, and mm -hmm. run as they focus in on that. Then the next question is, how do you feel towards that, like that energy or that part okay. of you? And so... They may say a, a variety of answers like, I hate it, um, or I really like it. Uh, or whatever. Yeah, I'm annoyed <laughs> by it, right? Yeah. Like, and the, the idea is that there's this place within all of us that has this curiosity and compassion to get to know all these different parts of us. If we can just ask for kind of our protective parts to give us a little bit of space... Okay. then we can kind of get to know this. And so if somebody says, well, I hate that my legs are moving like this and that I want to run, I may say that makes sense, makes sense. Let's see if you know we can get a little space from that and just get to know this. That may or may yeah. not be possible. Yeah. But So that's kind of the idea is like just getting to Navigate. know. Right. Okay. Getting to know these different parts of us um, and getting connected to that place within us that has the ability to do it, yeah. which they call like self it's we have all these different parts of us but then there's this place within us that knows how to connect um and it's it's kind of it's it's mind-boggling to me because i've worked with a bunch of clients that once they get space from this these kind of protective parts there is this compassion there mm -hmm. and even people who have really severe wounding can access it okay. and once that happens that kind of harmony inside starts to flow and you get a, a good understanding of why it is what's coming up for me. How long is the treatment or the how many sessions do you usually... I mean, I'm just trying to compare it to like, a, is it a, a brief counseling? Yeah. Is it like psychotherapy where you can just keep going and going? So I, I really like it because the way I look at it is kind of like a way of life. I use it in my personal life all the time now. Okay. And so I have a bunch of clients ask me that, how long is this going to take? And, and interestingly enough, I, I don't actually have an answer for them. I've seen research that not just with IFS, but any trauma modality, it takes around 10 sessions just to feel safe with the other person. Okay. Um, but that aside, I have some clients where we do a piece of work within two sessions. I have other clients that I've been seeing for two to three years. Okay. And so what I will tell people is it really depends. But what I love about the modality and the therapy itself is it doesn't attach the client to me because once they start to get access to that place, even in the sessions, I'm there, but like... They're doing all the they're work. They're doing all the work. Yeah. And so once people start to get in connection with that, mm -hmm one or two things can happen not just one or two things but they may say great i i our work's yeah. now complete or you know like for me myself i'm a client and i feel better with a therapist checking in every week and so you you may fall on that spectrum wherever you may be but exactly at least the modality in itself 
doesn't attach you to the therapist like some of the traditional talk therapies where it's like you're coming to me for, for me my to guide expertise your right conversation. And, okay and so so the client's the expert in yeah this modality. that's exactly that's exactly right nice. is is that place within them really is going to know what to do exactly well that's Ultimately, that should be every right. <laughs> every therapist um, right. or every modality, but you know, not always the case. Um, I was going to ask you. Ultimately, what is the goal of this therapy? Like, how do you know a client um, has benefited from this modality? Sure. How do you know they're done with treatment? I think that goes to like the initial stages where you're kind of contracting like what's the end of this going to look like right and so if I use the example of the person that said they were conflicted about whether they should, they should stay or go in a relationship mm -hmm. maybe it's I have a clear understanding of what I'm going to do right okay. and so that could be a goal right the overall I've noticed the overall arching theme that maybe the client doesn't say is like the healing of of wounds or attachment injuries and stuff like that can happen and then with that there's more inner harmony and people will report like i feel lighter i feel okay. um, like a weight has yeah, lifted off my right. shoulders and ifs has a term for that called like burdens which the idea is basically like there we have all these protective parts like you know a part of me that wants to leave or a part of me that wants to stay but Really underneath all of that is what IFS calls exiles because they're parts of us that we push down, rightfully so, because there's a lot of wounding or heavy emotions attached to it or beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so the invitation is, is if that compassionate place that everybody has can help those parts and let go of those burdens, then these protective parts won't need to protect in that yeah, way Yeah, be in anymore. defensive mode. Right. And inner, inner, inner harmony can be restored and that, that self place can, can lead a little bit more. And so that may look different for everybody, like what that means in the outside world. But I'm always asking like what it feels like inside when they get in connection with that place. And that'll normally lead you to, you know, does, is, is treatment <laughs> complete or, or not, right? Okay. So, and, and I always say, you know, for myself at least, is it complete for now? Because my life... There's yes. always a new stuff coming up, right? That's like I don't, true. I don't really like the term, like, am I fully healed? Because I, I don't really know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, you yeah. know, life I've, happens. Right. And, okay. It's always, and, and you don't know what you don't know. And so, you know, something could be happening in my life where I then realize, gosh, I, I didn't realize I'd have such a reaction to this. And I go do some, some more work, right? So, um, yeah, and that's my perspective on it, but I think it's really up to each person about what that means. Do um, you you mention a lot of um, trauma? Mm -hmm. Is this this family internal family systems therapy only used for trauma? Recommended for trauma? Or that's it's just... it's definitely recommended for trauma. Okay. There's some studies with it, especially with PTSD. But like, what I love about it is it's kind of branching out now into all other f areas. So. Okay depression another one is chronic pain um you know they just they did a study with with arth arthritis with it um and i've also found it helpful with like you know things that maybe aren't like diagnosable so to speak but like the relationship conflict thing right yeah. like so um yeah that's that's what i really enjoy about it is it, for me as a therapist, it doesn't put me in a box like I can only use this with this. Mm -hmm. And because of its kind of holistic and, and accepting nature of like all of the different parts of us, I haven't really found an instance where I'm like... Like that yeah, won't work for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might sprinkle in different things with it, but um, like I said, the, that's why I kind of look at it as guidelines instead of these are the rules because if you get pretty rule regimented, that's when I think... You know, things aren't going to fit nicely in a box. You mentioned so. a few of the of the benefits mm -hmm. of this modality, um, but overall, what can you expect? What are some of the major benefits that you can expect? You'll get to know yourself a lot better, <laughs> which might be scary or work. exciting. Yeah, <laughs> um, you'll get to know yourself a lot better. I I think the biggest thing that I've noticed within myself is 
my capacity for love and how my heart just opens up more now that I've let some of that wounding and messaging go. Mm-hmm. You, you, for me, you know, I've heard other people say this, but you start to like notice things that you didn't like. Um, yeah, you just become more self-aware yeah. in general. And I think your capacity to to love, your capacity to step into courage, um, your capacity to kind of see things clear. It's almost like when you when you heal pain. Somebody pointed this way. Um, I think her name was Tony Irvine Blank, but she she described it as it's like you're wearing goggles when you have pain or trauma, and then once that's healed, it's almost as if you take them off. Mm-hmm. And now I see things totally different because I'm not seeing through my wounding anymore. Because that can be like a fog. If I if I believe yeah. I'm unlovable, I'm going. My eyes are going to look at that, and mm-hmm. my parts are going to react to that belief. Right. Exactly. So my partner not texting me back sends me into a frenzy. Mm-hmm. Whereas when that messaging and woundings let go, maybe I just look at it as. He's my, partner didn't text me back. <laughs> my partner didn't text me back. And I'm not saying that's how you would react, but that's an example. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, each person's different in what they describe of what happens. But for myself, what I've noticed is I'm not as reactive to things. The, the, the loudness in my head has been lesser. Mm-hmm. It's, it's that I notice it and I have a relationship with these parts of me now. That's the other thing is it's not this idea that, like, everything's going to go away and you're just going to be zen. Yeah. It's it's this idea that you're going to have a different relationship with these parts of you. And that allows for more choice. And so, you know, I might be able to listen to the scared parts of me and respond to them, right, instead of them fully taking me over. Or reacting yeah. in a negative way. Right. Or, or mm-hmm. even when I work with couples, like speaking for your parts instead of from them, which means like, from them means if anger fully takes me over, I'm gonna say things like you, you mother, you know, yeah. and F word, right, B and, word. <laughs> yeah. And whereas if I have a little space from that, I can speak to it of like, you know, there's a part of me that's really angry that you did that, and it's because of X Y Z. And now the conversation goes hopefully a whole lot better. Oh, so yeah, um, a different you, route completely. Right. Right. And there, there's this this therapeutic term called differentiation which means like the ability to hang on to yourself in the presence of others Mm -hmm. and so IFS I think is one of the few modalities that I've seen like it's baked into the modality of like now I can I can hang on to myself while I'm in relationship with other people and to me like my own personal bias is that's what all therapy should be about like but um, yeah that's that's yeah. some of the examples. Now, you mentioned how this has helped you. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your personal relationship with this therapeutic modality? Um, you've been on both sides of the chair. Yes, yes. Tell me a little more. <laughs> so you're on that side of the chair yeah. now. <laughs> um, Tell me, please. Right. Um, so actually, it was, it was interesting how I found this was like in grad school, I was the student that was like poking holes in every theory. Okay. Like I was like, I would never use um, like techniques with CBT, like reframing thoughts. I think okay. those are helpful, but I would never use that with like somebody who's grieving. Because okay. if somebody says they just lost somebody, and I said, "Could you reframe that thought?" Like, <laughs> so it, we're gonna change your thought. Right, <laughs> exactly. Like, no, Probably it wouldn't go work. Well. And so in grad school, there was a part of me that was always poking holes of like, "Well, I would never use that here, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't use this here," and like, you know. And so then I found IFS, and I loved it because it didn't make me feel like. You were in a box. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like uh, what you just mentioned. And it, it put a lot of words to me because I like to play sports. I like to play football. And so I would often wonder how I was a different person on the field than I was like in the therapy room. And a lot of my grad colleagues wanted to come see me play. And I would tell them, <laughs> you can't because like you're going to see a different version of Justin out there that's going to yeah. warp your view of me. Right. And. And so when I found IFS, I realized I was like, oh, that's actually nothing to be ashamed about. It's a part of me that's very good at what it does. Mm-hmm. And if that part starts to drive my relationships, it's going to be bad. Like, okay. 
So yeah. I, I then, it's like uh, some IFS therapists will describe this of this light bulb moment when you find IFS of like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. Not that everybody feels that way, but that was what it was for me of like, I've got language as to why I'm almost different people yeah. in different settings. And so found it, uh, got trained in it, and the training experience for any therapist out there, I highly recommend you do it because it's super experiential. It's okay. not a, and, and that, If you like experiential. Right, right. <laughs> that's, well, that's, that's the thing theory. is it, it's... Yeah. It's... Um, I, for, I firmly believe that you can't take anybody where you haven't been. And so it it opened me up in ways maybe I wasn't ready for, but it's made me a better therapist and made me a better person. And so that training was super difficult for parts of me. And when I got out of it, I learned a lot about the stuff that I hadn't really tended to. Um, I wish grad school was more more that way and mm -hmm. not so much Same. cognitive, but you know, experiential. Or not so much um, textbooks and exams yeah. and lectures, but right. more exposure exactly. to real theories. Because, because I think, in, in what IFS has taught me is that my presence as the therapist, but also the client getting connected to that place, that's where a lot of the healing happens. It's not in these like, I did this one technique and yeah, it, and it, it was fantastic, right? Like, yeah. No, so, a report is definitely one of the main, main right. things for the client. Right. And I hear so many people saying, oh, I went, I tried five different therapists, but then the right. sixth, like that's the one. Yeah. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. No. Like it's, it's like finding, I don't know, the right home. <laughs> like yeah. you got to look and try it out and talk to many different ones until you actually make that connection, that safe connection right. that you need. Right. Everybody needs something different. Absolutely. So. Yeah. 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 I couldn't agree more. With that. <laughs> I'm glad we agree on that. <laughs> now, if somebody wanted to um, look for this kind of modality in a therapist, mm -hmm. is there a way to do that? Or Yeah. So, I mean, you could just Google IFS therapist, but they actually have a directory on the IFS's website. Okay. Um, so if you just type in internal family systems and go to their their website, you can just click on directory and filter by your location. And they and can find you there in the directory. Yeah, yeah. I'm on there. Perfect. There's a bunch of other therapists that are on there. Um, yeah, so highly recommend using using that. And it's it's growing so much now where, like, different communities are coming in, different um like uh, like when we spoke about how it can help with so there's like a directory for IFS and couples right mm -hmm. like um, and just as that expands I think yeah it's going to be better for people to find the care that they feel like to your point what's going to fit well for me I think is um, what we lack is teaching the client all the different modalities or therapy yeah. that there are there and it's hard because we understand if we look for a right. therapist we know what cbt is or right. solution focused or whatever brief um but they don't so you know it's important for us to put in the description as plain english as we can like right. what what is our theory yeah. you know and, and i think if if everybody would be a little bit more educated on that it would just be easier to find that right connection with the right therapist sure but it's hard because I don't even feel like we get that in grad school. No, no. <laughs> like, and, and that puts also, too, uh, for the client, like, it's it's now, I would imagine if I wasn't a therapist, I'd be like, so I have to somehow figure out the right therapist and the right modality? Exactly. Like, like, <laughs> like I don't know if I want homework or yeah, not. <laughs> yeah, and then there's all the logistics about insurance, and, like, so I can understand how people get overwhelmed with that. Yeah. My, my hope is that conversations like this, um, I know, like, Dick Schwartz, the founder of IFS, he's been on a big pod podcast mm -hmm. and done some of the work. And actually, some people have found me that way where they're like, oh, nice. I saw the work, how it was done, and said, that's what I want. And so awesome. I think education is great. Mm -hmm. But also, if people can see what a session is like, yeah. like, oh, yeah, like, and not just IFS, but I, now I saw what EMDR did or, or CBT exactly. and, and IFS, and this is what it's for me that's the way I am is like if I can see it done then 
although if it's for me, but reading Isn't that it, every human being, right. they got to see to believe it? <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, so... Yeah, no, but, I, th- I think um, bringing awareness and knowledge mm-hmm. in different modalities or different types of therapists yeah. is very important. It can yeah. only benefit the, the client at the end of the day, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, I loved our conversation. Uh, it was very educational, yeah. <laughs> okay, because I'm not too. an expert on that modality, <laughs> so I'm here just getting all the knowledge and like a sponge, and, yeah. and I love the existentials, the, you know, the ones that fall under the umbrella, so right. I, I already loved it, and I looked into the training. Is there any last message you want to tell our audience, whether they're a starting therapist or a parent or somebody just looking to see what kind of therapy they might like? Yeah, I, I, you know, you may have listened to this conversation and thought IFS is, is helpful for you, but I think our our conversation about like finding the right therapist, mm-hmm. um, it can be hard to trust your gut, but that's why I normally tell people uh, meet a bunch of them, find what you what fits for you, and then also too do do some of your own research if you have time, like go look at some sessions if if that's yeah, helpful. Exactly. Um, and yeah, I, I, the other thing too is that um, as exhausting as it is to maybe find the right therapist, knowing that like healing isn't always linear, it's kind of a bumpy road, at least mm-hmm. for me it's been. So I hope people give themselves the grace to... The opportunity and right, the chance. Yeah, and to, you know, the, to understand it's not going to be as smooth as we want it to be, but um, hopefully it's worth it in the end. Yeah. I haven't heard, well, till this day, I haven't really heard um, therapy has not helped me. Sure. I've heard the therapist didn't really do a good job or like I didn't connect mm-hmm. with them or eh, whatever, went to sessions and I'm done. Mm-hmm. But for those that get to make the connection, I still haven't heard like, oh, n- didn't do anything. Yeah. You at yeah. least get to discover yourself a little bit more or understand something yeah you know absolutely and sometimes i've even worked with clients where like i tell them up front this is a very collaborative process so i want to know what's working and what's not Mm -hmm. and you don't have to trust me on day one with that to feel safe with me to share that but um there's more than one way to heal and i'm here to help guide you to whatever inner knowing that is for you Mm -hmm. um it may be therapy. It may be therapy in conjunction with nature. It may be, you know, yeah, uh, it could be uh, a, whole... a month sabbatical that you take. <laughs> I don't know, but like it, it could be, it could be yeah. anything. So, uh, my, I look at myself more as a guide than a, like I'll help you guide to whatever, yeah, that inner sense of knowing is, and see where that takes yeah. you. <laughs> And from what you're telling me, it goes great for you. You are helping your yeah. clients, right? Yeah. So perfect. That yeah. works out. <laughs> Feel less, less burned out, too, not having to come up with all the answers. <laughs> exactly. Like, so. You're the expert. I'm just a guy. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like what I do now, right? You're yeah. the expert. I'm the right. guy. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what we talked about. If you have anything to say, please don't forget to leave us a comment and I will see you next week. <laughs>